All right, in this video, we're going to give a brief overview of the USA Formwork Tools package on the Tecla Warehouse. This installs a group of uh, plugins and tools used for modeling formwork in Tecla. Um, on top of the, uh, the tools that are installed, there's also a lot of configuration files and formwork shapes that are installed with the TSET package. Here I am on our, on our main page. Um, where you can download the latest versions um, of our formwork tools. Um, I'm going to go ahead and minimize this and go into Tecla Structures, and we'll take a quick look at the uh, tools that are installed uh, with our package. I'm not going to go too in-depth into every single field that's visible in the UI. Um, today, we just want to give a brief overview of uh, what the capabilities are and what types of um, uh, what types of tools are included with this package. What's also installed with this group of extensions is a modeling ribbon tab at the top. On the left side of the separator, um, here are some other system tools that are installed out of the box like wall formwork and slab formwork. And there's also a button here for scaffolding, which is a separate download. So you can also go and find that on the Tecla warehouse. And to the right of our separator is all of the uh, formwork modeling tools that are included with this, uh, with this download. I'm going to start off with the formwork product tool. And this is just like a custom part you would place with two points. And let's copy this uh, a couple different times. Um, and let's upload or open the, uh, the user dialog box here. Once we change to a different supplier, that's going to show all of the families that are available, um, what groups of objects there are, like panels. And then on the right is our product selection. So I can change this to be a different product type. And I'm going to change the last one so we can see the others. And there's different, uh, you know, these are going to be placed differently. So for a panel, it's always going to be placed at the start point. If we're doing some other type of object, it might be placed a little bit differently, like a brace. So let's grab this 2 by 4 with an aligner plate. And this is placed based off of the start and end point. Um, so as I move that end point, you know, the brace is going to adjust automatically. This was created for a couple different reasons. Um, a primary one is that uh, these are going to be placed within these other um, plugins that are set up and their configuration files um, for, for all of these products are referenced in these other configuration files. Um, and we're not going to get too in-depth into that today. Um, if you want some more information about that or if you're trying to create your own um, custom configuration files. We have documentation on the uh, on the Tecla user assistance. And a quick way to always find those two is if you just go over to the instructors page um, in the right um, in the right property pane over here. Um, you can just click on this link and it'll take you right to the TUA. Now let's go over these other plugins to the right of our form product. Um, next, we have a column formwork tool that you can click on a part as input. Um, this will adjust to the, the concrete shape. Um, there's lots of different options we can have for what's being created, um, how we want the, uh, the plywood size, the stud spaced, uh, what types of clamps we're using, or if we want to use um, wood clamps. Uh, we can switch those options pretty easily. Uh, we've also added a tab here where we can define the bolts or or nails that are going to connect the studs uh, to the plywood sheets. Now our other plugin that takes a part as input is the steel ply formwork tool. And we can just click on a panel. It'll add the steel ply formwork. And if I bring my dialog over here, um, Again, I'm not going to run through all these options just to give you enough uh, of an overview to see if this is something that, that would be useful for your type of work. Um, we can choose what the panel height is. 
um, what the height of the or the distances um, of the tie spacings. There's options to create whalers and strongbacks and what type of connection they are using for each of those. Uh, we can enter in a distance list for the um, for the strong backs or the horizontal um, wood pieces and the vertical wood pieces or these vertical strong backs. Uh, we can also create bracing. So I'll say that I want to create that on the right side. And we can change which side of the wall um, all this all these elements are being created on. We can enter in a spacing for the bracing, um, the dimensions relative to the, the bottom of the panel and how far you want it placed away from the face. Um, and we also have an option here to create scaffold brackets um, by just entering in what that spacing is and what the depth is from the top of the wall. So if you're currently using the formwork placing tool to do all of the, uh, the formwork for steel ply formwork, this might be a uh, um, an alternative for that to be able to quickly detail um, this much more much more efficiently. Um, and it's intelligent enough too where like if there's an interference for these uh, horizontal whalers where there was a connection um, to to the panels, um, those will be removed um, if there's a strong back at that location. Um, so this can save a lot of clicks and, and time from having to manually place those whalers and strong backs and, and braces. All right, our other tools here, we have our shoring tower, um, just a traditional 10K or, or frame shoring. Um, we can define the, the heights of the um, frames. And for most of these tools, if it's unclear or you don't know what sizes you can input. Um, if you hover over the dialog boxes, it'll give you more information, maybe um, a further description about what that field's used for. Or in this case, it shows me which lengths, uh, for this specific field, it shows me which lengths I can use uh, for the bracing length. And so it's not going to just use any value you enter. It's gonna round either to the um, closest value that uh, that you have um, as a part of that system. We can also choose the the heads, um, the bases, what type of um, clip we're using for those. Uh, we can change the um, the beam and joist properties. Like I can see here, that beam's too short, so let me change it to be a couple feet longer. It'll extend to that second head, and we can either turn some of these elements off. So if you just want those primary beams or the beams that are going to bear on the heads, um, you can uh, set that value to none. And we can also change the, the deck orientation, too. This prop shoring tool is used for slab formwork. So if you have um, props that are supporting beams, um, with a specific head and maybe a base or even bracing, this would be a really good tool for that. Um, you can also just choose to create props um, if you don't want to create beams. Um, I'm going to choose this prop name to be auto, so it'll pick the closest um, size prop whenever I enter in the height here. And it's going to show me what the minimum and maximum values are I can use. Uh, we can also enter in a distance list. Um, for spacing in my current model Y direction. <clears throat> There's some different options we have for how to lay out the beams. Um, you can either enter in lengths in order of what you want to use. You can also just set this equal to zero and it's just going to use whatever beam name you have selected here. So this is the beam size or name that it's going to try to place as much as it can. And then based off of some of your other options, um, it might try to place the closest size beam at the end that meets that uh, standard minimum overlap. And the two points that we are defining, that is going to be the area of uh, the bearing area. So it'll be from the start of the first beam um, to the end of the last beam. And some other options too we can define here if we want cross bracing 
Um, I can choose the name of that bracing. If it's like wood with brace clamps, for example, um, as well as defining what that tripod is if you want to use that. Another tool is our prop shoring tower. Um, again, we'll place that with two points. This is a tool that's used for props that are stacked vertically and they're usually supported by some frame number, um, some frame uh, member like you, uh, like you see here. Uh, pretty similar dialogue like to the, the previous one. So we can choose uh, what the propping heights are, um, what names we're using for the coupler, the base plate, the head, um, the prop. We can enter in a distance list for those bracing heights, um, what the spacings are. We can see what our available spaces um, are once we hover over this dialog. So if I type in two times seven foot seven, uh, that's going to give me the closest frame size I have there. And lastly is the drop head shoring tool. This is for inserting props um, and drop head shoring elements. So we call it drop head because these heads can drop and, and release um, these beams here. So this is a system that's used to insert those props, the heads, these primary beams, and secondary beams. And from the dialog, um, again, we can pick out the names of each of those objects. We can choose just to uh, not even to create secondary beams. We can enter in what the typical spacing is. Um, we can make this as wide or as long as you would like. So if I have a very large area here, I can change the distance list to update. Um, and we can also provide some sloping too. So if I want to slope it in the X direction, I can say that that second end is uh, 13 feet. And once I hit modify, um, this end over here is going to drop up. So it'll support sloping slabs. The other resource I want to share with you is the USA Formwork Tools uh, TUA section. Here you'll find just a brief overview of uh, the package, everything that's installed with it, and then each of these sub plugins um, or tools that are installed with the package, they have their own page that includes information about just the UI in general, or if you're trying to configure your own products or you want to take a deeper dive into how it's working. Um, there's documentation here for you know how to set those up, um, all the fields and parameters that you can use and specify. And there's also several configuration files that are installed to the system folders. Um, you'll you'll be able to find those by um, uh, by searching these um, file name extensions in the common system folders um, if you want to take a look at how some of these had been set up. But that's all for today's video. Thank you for watching.